Hi, I'm Martin Christ with the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. I work in the Watershed Improvement Branch. This is Cranesville Swamp in Preston County, up against the border of Maryland. The water from here flows through Muddy Creek and then down to the Yakagani River over a huge waterfall that you can see at Swallow Falls State Park. This wetland here is very famous in West Virginia because it was protected from development and farming and many things long, long ago. It's also very interesting climatically and because of the climatic basis of where this is, it's also got very interesting and unusual flora and fauna for West Virginia. Cranesville Swamp sits in a bowl and so um, it creates what's called a frost pocket. So on calm, clear nights, as um, heat radiates from the surface of the earth, the air that cools at the surface gets denser and it sinks down into the lowest points in the landscape. And here it sinks down to the bottom of, of this valley here. And if it gets cold enough, you'll get frost. So Cranesville Swamp, it's not overall colder than the surrounding landscape, but it's the last place to frost in the spring and the first place to frost in the fall. So plants that live here have to be adapted to a shorter growing season. It's not so much that they're adapted to colder temperatures overall, but they have to be able to get their business done in a shorter period of time. And that allows certain species that are more characteristic of places to the north to continue to persist here where they would be outcompeted surprisingly on higher places in the surrounding slopes by plants that, that, are, that could do well if they have a longer growing season. Cranesville Swamp is a combination of many different types of wetlands including uh, peat bogs and uh, sedge fens. Uh, but what, what I think of it is, is part of a, a network of conserved sites across the central Appalachians uh, that provide habitat for animals to move around and, and find their, their niche for where they want to live, particularly in the face of climate change where species are moving up in elevation and north. Um, this, this special place gives, gives animals and plants a, a place to, to find their suitable habitat um, where they may not be able to in, in other areas. The, the, the wetland itself is um, created by the, the, the landscape around us. You can see there's kind of a natural bowl uh, that forms from the mountains around us that drain a lot of water down into the wetland. We get over 50 inches of precipitation here annually and the uh, geology, the low point of the bog itself, um, allow that, that water to collect here and uh, slowly uh, drain back off into the, into the, the streams that drain it. Uh, so the Cranesville Swamp is providing you know, quite an quite a, uh, ecosystem benefit both to people and nature by filtering the water, slowing it down during heavy rain events, and, and slowly letting it off uh, after those rain events. So it kind of helps prevent some massive uh, flooding and allows that water to, to leave in a, in a more measured pace. One of the interesting plants here is the round leaf sundew. It's interesting for many reasons. One of the biggest is that is it's so-called carnivorous. It catches insects on sticky dots of sap on hairs on its leaves and then it gradually pulls in more leaves and absorbs the nitrogen from that insect and uses that nitrogen in its own growth and reproduction. One of the neat things about the uh, Central Appalachians is it's really a mixing plot, pot of uh, species that uh, are more commonly found up north and also species that are more commonly found uh, south of here. Um, so some of the uniqueness of the plant communities we have here is a blend of northern and southern species. We also have species that are at the end of their range here. Uh, one such species is the tamarack or the eastern larch tree. Uh, it's at the southern extent of its range here and uh, its next location is, is quite a, a long distance further to the north, so it's really kind of isolated here. And um, we, we manage for uh, eastern larch. We, we, you know, that's one of the conservation targets that was first identified that made Cranesville Swamp a, a target of our conservation efforts and, and makes it spe special botanically. What we're in right here is, 
is an it's a peatland. It's an area dom or characterized by an accumulation of undecomposed organic matter or peat. Um, the pH here is is somewhat lower, so people would say we're we're in a bog. But different people argue about what exactly makes a bog. This was never glaciated here, but many of the same species that you would find in bogs created by glaciers to the north also occur here. And a really dominant species that really drives the system right here is, uh, is the genus sphagnum of mosses or peat mosses. Little mosses that if you look at them closely uh, look like mop heads or, or Bob Marley and the whalers, I always say. Um, and so that drives down the pH even further. And what that does is it creates um, challenging growing conditions for a lot of things. It's wet, it has a short growing season, it's nutrient poor. And so um, there are a variety of species that are adapted to those conditions, such as large cranberry, which is growing all around us, and other things that won't grow here. But we also have, in our midst, we have a shrub swamp, which would be a wetland dominated by shrubs. Um, we have forested swamps here so a wetland dominated by trees. We have sedge meadows or wet meadows, um, which look basically like a bunch of grass, but you have some grasses and you have a lot of plants, grass-like plants called sedges that grow here. We have some honest to goodness marshes where you have um, plants kind of growing up out of generally flooded conditions and extending up out of the water. Um, and, um, and you even have some just open bodies of water, especially beaver ponds here. So all those would be considered different forms of wetlands and they all grow here in, in a really interesting mosaic of, of plant communities. One of the native species here at Cranesville Swamp is the red spruce. Uh, red spruce traditionally would have occupied over a million acres of, of habitat across West Virginia. And after industrial logging and fires and other disturbance associated with the last century, uh, the range of that species has been greatly reduced. We currently have uh, somewhere around 60,000 acres of mature red spruce across West Virginia. And there's an effort led by the Nature Conservancy and various partners known as the Central Appalachian Spruce Restoration Initiative, where we work to restore red spruce across its uh, native range. One of the ways we restore red spruce is by planting seedlings, and we've been doing that here at Cranesville Swamp for probably as long as any other site uh, in the Central Appalachians. And uh, we, we work collaboratively between West Virginia and Maryland to get that work done. Uh, in the, the early days of spruce restoration here, we would actually go find uh, red spruce trees that were growing underneath of power lines, places where we knew they weren't gonna be allowed to live uh, out their life cycle. And we would go dig them up and bring them back and plant them here at Cranesville. Fast forward today, we work collaboratively with the, the Casri Group uh, to get that work done by harvesting seed from genetically diverse sources of red spruce, having them grown in co commercial nurseries so they have extensive root systems when they come back to us, and then planting them out during volunteer days in the spring. Here we have these species that you would not find so commonly at this latitude, but you find them at higher elevations, or you find them in places like this that are a little lower but support more northern vegetation. Um, there are, um, there's a butterfly, for instance, the bog copper, which specifically hosts on cranberries. And um, it's, it's rare at this latitude, but because we have a lot of cranberry here, it's here. Um, a variety of birds that you associate with further north. Um, we're hearing a northern water thrush. That's something that, that occurs here. Um, we have um, alder flycatchers that sing about free beer and they live here. Um, my favorite is the northern saw wet owl, and it's the smallest owl that we have in the east. It's typically a species we associate with northern conifer forests, but um, it occurs in little islands down the highest uh, points in the Appalachians, all the way down into the, like the Smokies and beyond. And right here in Cranesville Swamp has been a reliable place to find them. In fact, on the Maryland side, the first breeding records ever for northern solid owls were, were here in Cranesville Swamp. If you'd like to learn more about West Virginia's wetlands, visit our website, dep.wv.gov. I'm Martin Christ. Thank you for watching.